Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Consolos Place. Our guest is Amadeus, super talented, multi hyphenate um, producer, engineer, tour drummer, educator, motivational speaker, published author, cool as hell, smart as hell. You'll enjoy the conversation. But first, we want you to take advantage of us. Take advantage of us now. Get in the running to be the winner of the Pensados Place Scholarship at Abbey Road Institute in Miami. It's your opportunity to go to this famous studio, Art House Studio, learn from the best, Julio and Robin and a whole bunch of other folks down there who are incredible. Um, learn your soft skills, learn your creative skills, learn marketing, learn touring, learn whatever you want, and also be able to have hands-on work in the studio. Um, you want to do that. You want to get that diploma. This school is incredible and on its way. You want to enter because you're going to be chosen based on merit. So in order for them to evaluate, you got to get your stuff in. This closes February 10th. How do you do that? Go to abbeyroadinstitute.com forward slash Miami forward slash Pensado's Place hyphen scholarship. Did you get that? So it's abbeyroadinstitute.com forward slash Miami forward slash Pensado's Place hyphen scholarship. There's the information. There's the link. Now it's on you. Come join us. We want to see what happens. Are you bad enough to be picked? Uh, I'll tell you somebody else who's bad is Rachel Leonard from Sweetwater. She's got some sound advice on how you can layer synths. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Rachel Leonard back with another sound advice segment. And today I've got one of our other engineers at Sweetwater Studios here with me, Bobby Delarocco. What are we going to talk about today, Bobby? Hey, we're going to talk about layering synths, specifically a super soft for stuff like future bass, trance, and dubstep. So let's get into it. Yeah, let's dive right in. So we're gonna break this sound down into four main components. We're gonna have our super saw, which is our basic chord stack. We're gonna have a mid bass, that's kind of our buzzy thing. A sub bass, giving us our like low end power energy. And then a lead synth, which can be kind of whatever you want. I think of it as like the flavor synth, if you will. Should we dive right into it? Yeah, so you're gonna start with the super saw then? That I am. So we've got an instance of serum opened up here. We are gonna create the sound by basically stacking a bunch of saw waves together, slightly detuned. So we've got our initialized patched, Take this first oscillator, oscillator A, add some unison, and detune it just a bit. We'll also load up oscillator B, bump it up an octave, and detune this one as well. We'll add a bit of hyper dimension on the effects tab, and some OTT. And lastly, all we're gonna do is just cut out some of the low end, because we're gonna replace that with our mid bass and our sub bass. Right about there, I think. Yeah? Yeah. Even without the low end, it still sounds nice and thick. Yeah. So how are you going to use this when you're composing? So for this, I like to typically start with a basic triad and then double the root and the fifth in the bass. So for this, let's do an E minor chord. And like I said, double the root and the fifth in the bass. And we're left with this. Awesome. So what's next, mid bass? Yeah, so for that, we're gonna load up an instance of, um, let's use Kilohertz uh, Faceplant. This is a really fun synth. So typically, I like to have the mid bass be like really buzzy, really help fill out like the mid to low end, not the super low end though. I think of it like up here power, not mm, the down mm -hmm. here power. You, you know what yeah, I, mean? I know what you mean. Cause you're still leaving room for the sub bass later, right? Exactly, yes. So for this, we'll once again take a saw wave. Let's uh, drop the octave down. So we're in more of the bass register here. We're also gonna take some noise. And we're gonna mix these together, and then we're gonna distort them together mm. in order to truly really create the sound. And we'll throw in some distortion. What should we use? Mm. Faturator. Faturator. Drop the fuzz down. And lastly, we're going to cut uh, the extreme lows out of this sound using a filter. So how are you gonna layer the mid-bass? So the mid-bass is only going to be a single note at the very, very root of okay. our overall chord. So for this, actually, I'll just copy down our same MIDI notes and just delete the top triad, as well as that doubled fifth. And we're left with this. And like I said before, it's kind of up to you how buzzy you want your sound to be. If we want it to be buzzier and more gritty, we can bring up the noise level. 
or if you want something smoother, you can keep it fairly low as well. So next up is sub bass? Exactly, yeah. So for this, let's use uh, a Reason Classic Thor. And like I mentioned before, for this, we're just gonna use a pure sine wave. I think that that gives us the most power and it's the cleanest sound overall. A pure sine wave bass like this is also great for a lot of other genres. If you're looking at like house music um, mm -hmm. or like a slap house, for example, that low end that's coming through on those basses, a lot of times is just replaced with a sine wave because it does generate so much extra power and so much extra energy. Just like just... feel it in your chest. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So we've loaded up our sine wave, dropped the octave, and for this, we'll just use the exact same MIDI information as we did for our mid bass. And now that it's in, you almost like, you don't totally notice it, kind of. Yeah, it's kind of hiding under there. Yeah, but if we take it away... Oh, you feel that it's gone. Exactly. <laughs> it feels lighter. Yep, exactly. So last is the lead? Exactly, yeah. And like I said before, this one can kind of be whatever you want it to be. Well, awesome. That sounds great. Thanks, Bobby. For sure. And I think that's all we got. That's it for this week's Sound Advice segment. Thanks for watching, and hopefully this inspires you to make your own sounds. There you go. Take that advice from Rachel. Learn your craft. Do your thing. Uh, remember, hit us up on all our platforms. Like, subscribe, and click notify if you would. We'd appreciate it. Get back in touch with you because uh, we love talking to our audience, and uh, we love hearing from you. But without further ado, he's a bad boy. Let us just share it with you. Here's Amadeus. What's up, man? My Amadeus. brothers, great to see you guys always. Herb, yeah. Dave, Legends, yeah. Masato Place, we here, man. Happy New Year, my yeah. brothers. Happy New Year to you too, man. Happy New Year. Yes, sir. Yeah, good yes, to see you. So it's seriously, it's lay out all the different things that literally you do. Wow. Um, music producer, music director, drummer motivational speaker, music educator, now author. Wow. Ooh. Tell yes, us about sir. that. What's, what's happening yeah. with that? Yes, sir. It's called uh, The Story of Amadeus and the Beat Goes On. Um, and let me just flip through a few pages. So it's basically kind of just taking you through my life as a youngin. As you can see on the cover, it's myself. Uh, I have my dad's, my dad's headphones on and I'm touching his radio. I might have got a beating that night. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but you know mom and dad caught the shot so it's just kind of you know just giving you the full story of how i became amadeus the musician the producer all the titles that i mentioned it's all photos of myself um as you can see you know I, there i go again touching dad's stereo and the uh -huh. records hopefully i didn't crack anything um so right. again it's, it's 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 a book it's actually a kid's book uh, okay. it's for kids but a lot of grownups and adults seem to be really appreciating it as well, which is I'm grateful for. Um, but it's just highlighting my story, kind of painting the picture of how I started, when I picked up the drumsticks for the first time, when I got my drum set for the first time, when I got my first keyboard, the whole church thing, and just kind of, you know, telling the story all the way through, straight, sweet, to the point, nothing long winded, it's like 20 something pages, just gives you, it just gets you right there. Um, and then there's a picture on every page. You know, all of the pictures is of me that were taken by my family members and parents and friends. And um, and I released it in December. So it's, it's not even a month old yet. Um, independently, of course, I'm out, I'm out the trunk with it like cash money. Um, there you go. There you, you know, go. So no Amazon and nothing like that yet. I kind of wanted to fill the grind. I wanted to fill this new, um, you know, this new area that I tapped into. So I'm signing all of the books. I'm packaging them on my own. I'm going to the post office and sending it out. I just wanted to feel there that hustle and that grind of being a new independent author. So I'm, I'm very excited about it. I got to give a big shout out to the co-authors, Lynn Hobson and Trina Stackhouse, who I worked on this alongside and very excited about it. It's out now, as I mentioned, you can get it on the website, which I just created, www.iamkingamadeus.com. And we're here. We're here. So I just nice. added another one, Er, what yeah. you think? Oh, no, listen, um... I was waiting for aquatic instructor and then, you know, you know, nuclear physicist. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what's up, man. I'm, I'm so impressed. I, I, well, listen, one of the things I will say, when Dave and I had our book published and done, it was a big deal. Yeah. Like, you, you just never yeah. think you're going to. And then you get people like Forbes and stuff to cover it. But, but one of the things we didn't lose sight of that I like about what you're doing that book is designed to inspire kids. 
Yes. That if, that if you could do it, they can do it. Absolutely. And, and, it, and it always doesn't come from shiny beginnings. Sometimes it's humble beginnings and you just don't know. And, and I think Dave and I's story had elements of that. And, and that's why for our audience, those kind of stories are important because when you're down or it's not happening, you pick it up and go, wait a minute. Right. He, you know, he, he found a way through um, and, and here you are. Now, now the, the, the other thing that is fascinating is when you're the person that you are, you create music for Sports Center and all kinds of different things, you're out on the road, you have so much input coming in that your processors have to sort of choose and decide what you're going to do with it and where you're going to apply it. I'm guessing. Am I close? Yes, you're absolutely right. And I'll, I'll share this with you guys. So when I go on tour uh, and I tour Trey Song, this is music director and tour drummer. When I go on tour, I leave music production alone. Uh, I don't touch it at all uh, because it's so much work that goes into uh, preparing a show and building a show as a music director. Uh, yes. A lot goes into it. And I just want to be focused on the task at hand. You know, it's, it's depending on the city that you're going to, depending on the region and where you go, you might have to change and switch up the show. Right. What worked right. last night in L.A. may not work for the next show in New York. Um, mm -hmm. So you have to be really tuned in and tapped in to make sure that you're not distracted in any way. So like I said, once I'm on tour, I stop on the production side of things just to focus mm -hmm. in on that. And then vice versa. When I return home from tour, I'm very inspired. I, I, I've been to various cities. I've been to various regions. I've met a lot of people, right. heard a lot of different things, musically, personally, conversations, yeah. eight, eight, eight different types of food. So, and I pull from all of those different things for inspiration. So when I create, it's amazing because I'm just pulling from all of those inspiration and all, all of the inspiration that I got from being on the road. Man, let's go back before Amadeus was Amadeus, okay? <laughs> 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 Man, I, I don't know if I, w if I would really want and wish to have your parents in terms of the way they brought you up or if I could have dealt with the strictness of it and maybe I would have gone the other direction. I don't know. But man... man. Uh, I'll, share, I'll, I'll share this with the audience. Like your mom would give you five minutes to go to the store and come back, and uh, and then you had to wear a Catholic school uniform. Yes, come sir. Come on, man. Come on, man. It was, it was difficult, Dave. I'm not gonna lie to you. It was very difficult. <laughs> um, I disliked my parents for quite some time <laughs> because of it. <laughs> and as a kid, you don't really understand that they that yeah. they're looking out for you and, and that they have your best interest. You're just saying, Mom, I want to go here, I want to go there. My boy's over here, my friends yeah. are over there, they're going to the movies, they're going to this party. Why am I always getting a no, 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 no? Why mm -hmm. are you looking out the window when the when the corner store is directly across the street? You can mm -hmm. see me. You don't have to look at the window, you don't have to time me. But the neighborhood that I lived in, to be exact, 169th and Washington Avenue, they call my block the nine, not for the number nine, but the nine. You know, so yeah. she grew up there. My grandparents grew up there. My whole family is well known in the neighborhood. So they they experienced what I haven't experienced. And that's what yeah. I didn't know. So they were trying to protect me. I, I, I just felt they had the jujitsu kung fu grip on just my whole entire life. Like, man, y'all don't want me to be great. I can't yeah. go hanging out. I'm getting laughed at. Y'all send me to Catholic school. Now I got to wear this, this uniform, <laughs> this, this, this snaps, this shirt. The tie, the shoes, when well, my boy got on Jordans, he got on Timberlands, I'm dressed up, you know. But those are the sacrifices that they made. Uh, and thankfully, you know, like I'm like I said, I'm from the Bronx, you know. Um, and, and thankfully that they were those type of parents, because if they weren't those type of parents, I, I absolutely know for a fact that I wouldn't be here speaking with you lessons today. Something, something wrong would have happened if they didn't love me and care for me the way they did. Um, it, no, yeah. no, no interview with you would be complete without talking about Bishop Pastor Michelle oh, White. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. She, she, she's not with us in physical yes. form. Yes. But um, that must have been a, uh, an incredible influence on you. Absolutely. Absolutely. She, first of all, sleep in peace, angel, um, and thank you for bringing her up and thank you for mentioning her. I actually, uh, in the book, when you turn, you know, to the page, I actually dedicated it, uh, the book to her. Wow. Um, if you can see it. Um, and 
yeah, I remember walking into our office as a little kid wanting to play drums. You know, I had started playing drums in school. I fell in love with it. I became passionate about it. And I remember knocking on her door asking, could I be the drummer at her church? And she's like, <laughs> well, you can't be the drum at my church because my son is already the drum at the church. He's already playing drums. Like, how, how, how are you going to do that? Um, but she was like, you know what? But there's something else you can do. You can be the percussionist. Um, and I'm like, okay, cool. So I was playing the kungas and the cowbell and, and, and the wood blocks and the chimes. And I had a great time. And I was able to really develop and shout out to her son, my big brother, um, the person that looked like me uh, that I saw for the first time play drums. And that's Steven Soup White. Uh, and I saw him play and I was just was like, wow, if I applied myself, if I practice, if I really love this instrument, like he loves this instrument, maybe one day I can sound like this. And that's where it all started. He, uh, my pastor elevated him to the keyboards and to the organ. She elevated me to the drums, and then I was officially her drummer and the drummer at the church. And that's when all the sauce came in, Dave and Herb. That's, that's where all the swag came in. Yeah. One thing that she said to me, and I mentioned it in the book, where she taught me how to be in the spirit, how, how to play. She would say, play what heaven is playing, right? Mm -hmm. And as a little kid, you're like, well, I know I'm down here, and I know from what I've been taught. Heaven is up there right? and I can't be here and there at the same time. So how do I know what heaven's playing? You know? Right. right. And in the same moment, I grasped that she was meaning whatever is in here, whatever's in my heart, whatever's yeah. in my soul, whatever it is that I'm feeling throughout my body without forcing it, without thinking on it too much, whatever, it, whatever feels good, play that. And, and that's who I got that from. That's where I learned that from. So when you see the drummer, I'm a dance on tour, Trey songs, just know that it was the drummer, Antoine Thompson, that was at church, you know, Greater Faith Temple Church. Now the Cathedral of Greater Faith Church playing and right. playing the drums from Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, all day Sunday, you know, I was in church. Um, wow. So again, I, and I appreciate you, Dave, for bringing her up, you and her, and because I want the world to know her name. I want the world, even though, yeah. like you said, she's not here in the physical form, she's with us in spirit. And I just, I, as long as there's breath in my body, and even when there's no longer breath in my body, this mm -hmm. book will always exist. And her name will be in it. The story will be in it. And I'm just grateful for her life. And um, thank you for allowing me this moment, you know, to see, yes. speak on her and celebrate her. They're naming, uh, they're naming a street after her. Yes. In the Bronx. Yes. Bishop Michelle Way. Bishop Michelle White Way. Yep. Absolutely. And, and, so you drive down, you know, she's right there. And I, and I think that... Um, um, we can't say enough that generally, particularly for musicians and people who work in music who break through, they break through because of their village. Yes. They have to have their own talent, but it, it takes more than that. And, and, you know, knowing that you can be part of a village and that the village can fulfill you and, and take you to the next place, which then prepares you to prepare the next village, because that's also our role. Absolutely. Um, so along the journey, you meet all kinds of people. I remember uh, one Puffy reached out for me when I had Brian McKnight. He wanted to do some stuff. You know, Puffy liked to put a, a really good singer with a really good rapper. He always do stuff. You have a Puffy story. How did you meet him? What's the Puffy stare? Yeah, man. So all my life as a young kid, I dreamt of being a bad boy hip and producer. I, I used to wear my hair like kids. I went and got the part. In the oh, center, yeah. I had the shiny suits, I had the shades, all of that, right? And right. I remember being in Harlem one time, and he was at Rucker Park, and I walked up to him. I had my beats on a cassette tape, and I'm like, yo, my name is Amadeus. I'm a producer. One day, I'm going to be down. And he was like, all right, Playboy. Um, you know, so I put the work in, uh, produced for over 50 artists at that time, right? And then and then had the opportunity to work with an artist that he had signed called Sherry, named Sherry Dennis. Shout out to yeah. Sherry. Produced the record. And... You know, it kind of got his attention. Shout out to Harv Pierre and the whole squad, Conrad mm -hmm. and all of the, you know, you know, the gang. Okay. And um, I felt myself in the meeting and it was like, hey, man, what you got going on? What you doing? You know, we love what you're doing. We love how you move. You know, are you interested in, you know, becoming a part of bad boy management and, and, and hitting it? And I'm like, <laughs> what'd, you, what, what'd you say? And I was that like, was, hell yeah. That <laughs> was amazing. <laughs> so we're in the studio they put me at daddy's house which i miss so much man uh, daddy yeah. house recording studio home of biggie and faith and one where all the records were made yes. and i'm in the meeting room 
And many room as well, you know, all of the producers, D Dot and, and Mario Winans and Stevie J, all of the all oh, my yeah. heroes were oh, yeah. so I'm in there. Puff walks in, sticks his head in, says what's up, goes to his room. He he has Studio A, of course, it's his room. It's all right. nice and fancy. And so I'm right. making music. The phone rings and they're like, hey, I'm a dance, uh, Mr. Combs, you know, wants to see you in Studio A. And I'm like, okay, cool. Walk in, just him by himself, playing music. And he's like, what's up? What's good? What's good, Playboy? Everything cool. You know, I have a seat. Like, take a seat. I want to play a few records. I'm, you know, working on this new album. I want you to get a feeling, a vibe for what I'm doing. You know, press his place, playing music. I'm vibing. Turns around. Puts another joint on. Vibing, turns around. Turns the music off. Turns around and just kind of was just like. Mm. Mm. Just like that. Right? So I was like. <laughs> 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 you know, I didn't know what was going on, right? right. So just, but from from how I'm raised and how I'm taught, you know, eye contact is everything. Yes. You know? and, yes. And, and for me, it was a moment of this is my hero, one of my idols, it's a person that I wanted to work alongside all my life. The moment is now. You are here, and that's how I was kind of thinking. How, in much, my head. how much? How much time did you did you look at each other? Yo, it probably felt like three hours, but it probably was like a minute. <laughs> right, right. Long but time, even a minute is a long time. Yeah. Yo, and, and I'm, and you know, and he's like, all right, cool. Um, you, you can go back to, you know, go back to the room. I'll, I'll come holler at you before I get out of here. I'm like, all right, cool. Went in the room. I didn't even think nothing of it. Went back to making beats. Get a phone call. Rest in peace. Fran Sparrow called. I know you guys know right. Fran. Right. Fran managed all of the producers under, you know, under Bad Boy. Yeah. So she called and she was like, Congratulations. And I'm like, what happened? She's like, welcome to Bad Boy. Welcome to Hitman. She was like, you know, we from the talent, we already knew you had it. But she was like, you passed the puff stare down. And I was like, uh. <laughs> stare down. I was like, okay. She was like, yeah, you passed the puff stare down. Most people like, you know, get a little nervous. Most people start sweating. Most people turn away and look off and start stuttering and everything like that. And she was just like, you were just like that. I was like, yeah, I'm supposed to be here. You know what I'm saying? So it was a moment of confidence. It was a moment of I worked all my life to get to this point. Yes. And ain't no time to be afraid now. Ain't no time no. to buckle now. We, we no. here. What you gonna do? We gonna go make no. a record right now. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. yeah absolutely. That was the whole story, man. It's it's just in, it's incredible to see. Now, now the other thing when success comes, it's always interesting to me when success comes because people have to deal with things they haven't dealt with before. Correct. You know, Crowded time schedule, making sure your team is on point, checking your accountant, knowing, am I hot? What projects am I calling? What A&Rs do I know? Um, am I working globally? Am I, it could be anything. You know, there's just so many things different. And then what's cool with you, you have the Sports Center gig, right? So, you know, tell us about that. You came up with music for it. Is that what, is that what happened? Yeah. So what happened was I, um, uh... I've been doing some, I was doing some scoring for Sports Center. So Sports Center, Monday night football, Thursday night football, uh, some uh, NCAA stuff for, for college basketball and football, and basically just, you know, creating a lot of the spots that were that were happening underneath highlights and uh, at, and at the games. Um, and then I was presented the opportunity to create the theme song uh, for, ES, for ESPN First Take. Uh, first take, okay. Stephen Smith's yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yes, Stephen right. A. First take, yeah. yep, Stephen A. Smith. Uh, the older show had Skip Bayless on it, uh, right? Carrie Champion, uh, and now the new show has um, Stephen A. Smith, uh, Max Kellerman, who, who just uh, just got just, another yeah. show, but he was on there, right. and, uh, and Molly Kiram. Right. Um, so right. that opportunity presented itself, and I love to tell that story briefly because I almost blew it, and I'll tell you why. The music director that was hiring me to do all of these different spots for sports, cinema, Monday night football, and stuff like that. Was, was teaching at a college in Connecticut. And he invited me to speak on a panel that he was doing for his class. Um, and he mentioned to me, he said, hey, there's no budget. You know, you know, this is on me. Just, you know, come up. You know, I'll take you out to lunch after. And, and that's it. And then, you know, the, the ignorant side of me is saying to myself, <laughs> colleges have, they have a lot of money. <laughs> you know, so when you hit me with the whole budget thing, no budget thing, and then, I was in you know, New York and it's Connecticut. And he's talking about deep in Connecticut. So like about a two and a half hour drive each way. We talk about gas. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, come on, man. And right. I was like, you know what? I'll pass. I'll keep you posted. Keep me posted in the next one. Hung up the phone, guys, and just almost slapped myself in the face. And huh. I was like, I'm this. What are you doing, bro? And I'm like having this conversation. I'm like, what are you doing, bro? This guy has hired you for ESPN Sports Center. 
Monday Night Football, all of these different different opportunities. He paid you very well, right? right? And then he's calling on you for a favor and you're bringing up money? Uh-uh. And it was just a reality check. And I caught it really quick. I called yeah. him right back and I said, what time do you need me there? I will be there. He said, you sure? Because you don't know. I said, sir, <laughs> I will be there. I showed up, spoke on the panel. It was phenomenal. He's like, listen, I ain't got no fancy lunch for you guys. There's a Subway's right across the street. If you're down, I'm down. I said, man, let me get the tuna uh, a foot long with, 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 uh, with pickles. I want yeah. extra mayo. <laughs> I, want, I want Chipotle, Chipotle mayo. And I want sweet peps and lettuce and oil and vinegar. So you see, so obviously I, I go to Subway. <laughs> Clearly. <Right? laughs> Clearly. <laughs> you know? So we're in there, we're conversing, and he goes, Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out this theme song for first take. Mind you, I don't even know what first take show was at that time. And mm. I'm trying to get mm. Talib Kwali, but having a hard time reaching Talib Kwali and most deaf. And I'm like, it's my guy, you know, my my, 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 my son's mom tours with him. I right. introduced a few records for him. Like, I can connect you, cool. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Before I connect you, who's doing the track? And he goes, we haven't figured that out yet. I said, mm-hmm. here's the thing. You connect me, I do the track. I, I connect you with Talib and most of You yep. let me do the track. And he's okay. like, dude, I love your work. Done deal. You know, and that's how it all came about. And the moral of the story is don't let things, material things, money, you know, ruin opportunities. Being great, yes. doing yes. too much, you know. Pay it forward. Look out, yeah. be a blessing. The, the guy was a blessing to me for years, putting checks in my pocket. How dare me not return the love and and and, and fulfill yes. a favor that he asked me to fill? Because if he wasn't, if he if he didn't do that, like th- th- I wouldn't have never produced the theme song. And that's definitely one of the biggest highlights of my career as a music producer. And I, I think also too that, and again for our audience, life is about being ready when the door gets opened. Yes, sir. When the window's open, like you, you don't have time to say, hold up, keep it open for me. Let me go back here and get it together. And come on, you got to step into the breach and bring it. You yes, know? sir. And, and then if you don't make it, it's not because you didn't take the shot and you'll learn for the next time. But you got to take the shot. And you got to be out there Absolutely. and be in the traffic. You, Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah, I mean, it's 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 pretty critical. The the the. One of the things that is always interesting um, is that when we when we meet people who also are steeped in their family, mm. there's a <clears throat> there's a assuredness about their hand musically and where they're going and a sure footedness. Um, do you think that family is part of your balancing thing to, to allow safe space for your creativity? Yeah, I, I feel like family play a they play a big part, especially for me. Um, you know, when I started this 20 plus years ago, you know, I was a little kid. I was a youngin, and 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 it was just based off of all love and passion, just being excited right. to create and to fly around the world and play drums, you know. And then once you get older and you mature and you and you have a family of your own, your why changes. The passion is still there, the love is still there. It's, it's definitely a lot deeper, right? But now you have responsibilities. You know, mm-hmm. now you have children and a spouse, you know, to to provide for and to care for. Right. So it just, it just allows you to take things a little more serious than you did in your teenage years or when you're 20, 21 years old. So my family is everything. They motivate me. Uh, they inspire me. Yeah. They, they, they they're the reason now why I work so hard. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Because it's not it's not it's no longer just me that I'm responsible for. It's, it's them as well. And we're a team. You know, it's not like I handle everything. Like, you know, we're, we all play our parts and yeah. we're all a team. So that's the motivation that I have that sometimes you need internally. You know, when, when you doubt yourself, when you don't yes. feel, you know, you're as hot as you used to be or age is starting to creep up on you and you're seeing all yeah. of the youngins, you know, oh, yeah. popping up and doing your thing and you start questioning yourself. Am I still great? Can I still do it? Can I still compete? It's your family that loves you through all of that. That loves <laughs> that's you, through, right. you know, when you're not this hot or, or when the phone calls aren't coming through, you know? So yeah, family is everything to me. It seems to me that, that we're assembled from as our creativity and who we are and our, uh, is assembled from little pieces of this, little pieces of that. So like, for example, you're a little piece of pastor Michelle, you're a little piece yes, of sir. Kobe Bryant, you're a little piece of yeah. mom and dad, you're a little piece yes. of the Bronx, you're a little piece of, 
on and on and on and on and on. And without that, you can be creative, but there's nothing to be creative about. You know, it's like it's like trying to think if you don't know a language in your brain. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so expand on the Kobe Bryant part. Yeah, man. It's it's. I remember you know when he passed away. I was sitting there because it was close to my birthday. Um, and I just would I just hate that day. You know what I mean? Because he was such a powerful person, a person that just fought. You know, through the doubt, through the hate, through the pain, through yeah. people not believing. You know, in him, the challenges of dealing with personal issues with your teammates, you know, all, all everything was against him, man. And, 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 and he became the mama and he became the GOAT. He became the legend and the world for, will forever celebrate him and praise him for, you know, his contribution to basketball, but just in the world, just to the world in general. Um, yeah. You know, so Kobe, man, it's, it's, it's one of the most inspiring brothers ever. Uh, and I, and I only pray that the inspiration that I give off to others, I know I'm not a basketball player. I'm not an athlete but at least to the musician world and just life in general, that people will look at me in the same light as, as, a, as a breath of fresh air, as a person that's real, authentic, sincere, uh, and, and that just gives of himself 100%. Yep, yep, for, for sure. Now, the um, one of the other things that uh, the KRK Creators Classic was a contest run by KRK, Yes. And people submitted beats and got selected kind of on the basketball ranking kind of system. Like and then the playoffs. There's be, yeah, playoffs, exactly. And then there's going to be a boot camp in Nashville where you go down with a couple other folks and evaluate these guys. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And, and big shout out to my KRK family, man. It's, it's, they've, they've shown me the, the most love and support throughout the years. Definitely uh, my favorite speakers to use and, and to turn up as loud as I can possibly can uh, while creating and making music. Um, but yeah, I got called for the opportunity alongside uh, Scott Storch and DJ Khalil. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're going to be traveling to Nashville. They did select the winner. I forgot his name. Forgive me, King, for forgetting your name. Um, but they did choose a winner. Um, and we're all going to have an opportunity to get in the studio together alongside the producer that won and just kind of, you know, coach him, you know, allow him to produce and show us how he creates and just kind of guide him through the ways that we've created hits for some of the biggest stars and just kind of give him the gems and the knowledge and the little secrets, you know, that we all have, have, have learned and created along the way. So just, you know, sharing and caring, man. So definitely yeah, great, no, great to be a part of that. It, 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 it's incredible. Shout out to uh, the KRK team and yes, sir. You know, Beth Hyde and, 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 and Mac and, Destin mm-hmm. Bennett, the, the, yes, the whole, Destin, my brother, Destin, oh, yes, my sir. man, my man, Fabio. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have to tell you about Unity Gain on another front. Now, um, <laughs> for uh, uh, you know, Batter's Box is something that Dave um, believes he's got the upper hand on. I don't necessarily believe that that's true, <laughs> um, and so it takes somebody like you to kind of knock his block off with it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Uh, Dave, what are you, you feel, you feeling a little spicy today? A lot spicy. I'm, 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 I'm the one that up Kobe Bryant in this thing, man. I'm Kobe. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Now, and remember before we go, I just have to say this. Kobe Bryant was only in, in one video as a rapper in his career. My, my act, my idea. So now I look back at that and cherish the hell out of it. Right. Uh, And you know what's crazy? He was probably early 20s when he did it. People were sort of clowning him about his rap career. Right, right. And I mean, clowning him. And he was the most polite, cool guy. I had to tell him to stop calling me sir. Wow. Because, you know, I'm I'm like a basketball freak and a Laker fanatic. Yes, sir. I'm like, I got Kobe Bryant on the set and I could call his sister. And and he all he wanted was a chef to make sure that he kept eating the way he needed to be in tip top physical condition. Other than that, he didn't want any extra stuff, not bodyguards, not nothing. And um, so, man, I I cherish that. That that was a special time. Wow. What a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. So, Dave is inspired by Kobe. Amadeus inspired by Kobe. We're all inspired by Kobe. All right, Kobe one, you bring it. Bring it to Kobe two. All right, vocals. <laughs> Ooh. Kimberell. Oh. Ooh, ooh. Samples. 
Ooh. Diddy and the Hitman. Oh. Melodies. Wow. Beyonce. Ooh, good. I love that answer. Major or minor? Major. Lyrics. Jay Z. Oh. Inspiration. God, my pastor, family. I know I went off with a tangent. <laughs> that's good. No, that's good. Favorite key to play in or sing in? C. Yeah, that's kind of a wimpy key. <laughs> um, <laughs> loops. Ooh. By the James way, Brown. At least C sharp, because that's close to F sharp, which is my yeah. favorite key. <laughs> okay. James Brown, man, my boy. Um, favorite drummer? Ooh. I'll go Dave Weckl. Oh, oh, nice. What, if you had to join a band, what band would you join? Earth, Wind, and Fire. Ooh. <laughs> yes. Yeah, why you gotta say that? Because now Herb's gonna definitely say that you, you clean my clock. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if her going to say anything. The audience, you can see the audience right now. They're just closing their laptops and say, David does ask what. So, so Amadeus, before, you know, because time flies so fast, I know, one I of the know, things I that I think is always interesting is your perspective on the music business and the future. Are you optimistic? Are you feeling good about it? Yeah, I am. I, I, at least, you know, it's pros and cons always, right? Where technology has kind of made it accessible to everybody. Social media, the internet kind of made it you know, accessible to everybody. And when something is accessible to everyone, you know, not, a, yes, you know, the, 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 the quality the, goes the down. The quality of it, the value of it goes down yes. because it's accessible. So it's like, let me try it. Back right. then when I came in, you know, you guys can relate to it. It wasn't a popular thing to be a producer or, or a touring right. musician. It was like, That's oh, right. you're that? Oh, okay, cool. And you will be in your own, you right. know, your own lane. You know, now it's right. like, oh, you just need a computer and, and some so- and a door or a software, or or you just I just need to go, you know, uh, uh create an IG account, uh, uh, yep. uh, uh yep. you know, one of those things, and now I'm on, now I'm an artist. Like it's like, come on, man. So right. it right. depends. Creatively, I'm a little, I'm a little uneasy. Um, but all I can do, all we can do as real creators, and not to take anything from any from you know anyone else, but all we can do is focus on what we do. Focus right. on what we do, give what we give, create what we create. Um right. the world is either gonna appreciate it or they or they are or they aren't. Um, right. you know, and, and and from a technology standpoint, from a business standpoint, it's a little scary. Not really a fan, it's like again, pros and cons with the streaming thing, and you know, yeah. where I'm used to physical CDs and physical copies. Being so, yeah. people rushing out to to to, to yep. you know to stores to buy albums, right? Uh, and 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 those albums r- really being counted in regards to what's sold. Now you got the streaming, which is great too, because right. now you can be anywhere and everywhere, and you can press a button, and now you can have the album. But it's just like right. the, the the money that you're getting paid for streaming isn't cool. So it's always again, it's pros and yeah. cons, man. And yeah. you know, yeah. you, you you try to you try to navigate through it. You try to. Um, there's another word I'm looking for I can't find but you, you try to figure things out and make it through it and I think that's something that we'll always continue to do as music and the music business you know continues to grow yeah I agree uh, how, how do you uh, sorry to interrupt uh, no I'm not interrupting I'm part of the show hey, you um, man <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, how do you how do you deal with your religious beliefs your religious upbringing and the music industry for example like like, like talking about a a, a a a piece of whiskey, you know. Right, well, right. How do, you, how do you how do you make all that fit together and 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 come out being Amadeus and being true to who you are, being true to everything in your life? Right, I love that. Uh, I think it's just about being real and authentic, right? And you know, I'll, I'll share this. Growing up, the church sometimes, right, and sometimes church goers create or paint this picture of how you're supposed to be as a Christian, right? Mm-hmm. And, and especially as a youngin, and you try to live according to that. Yeah. And when you fail, it's like, oh man, I'm the worst person in the world. I'm so bad. Mm-hmm. And the, the older I got, I got, you know, and, and, and when I matured just period and spiritually as well, you learn that we're all human. We're all continuously going to make mistakes 
and that's there's there's no perfect person, whether it's the preacher, right. the pastor, the bishop, the, we're all human beings. And once I understood that, you know, I just really just took it easy on myself. You know, I have morals Good. and values that's been instilled in my life from my parents, from my pastor, you know, and and I have a conscience, you know, so when something's right, it's right. And when it's wrong, it's wrong. And if it's something wrong that I've done, then I deal with that internally and personally and between myself and God. And that's the only, you know, the only person that I feel like I, I, I owe an explanation to unless I do someone else harm. Um, but I, I struggled with that throughout the years. And then when I became an adult, it's, I just, you know, just said, listen, I love God. I fear God. I worship him. I'm grateful of who I am and him creating me and the gifts and the talents that he's blessed me with. I'm going to do the best that I can to be as positive as I can, to be a leader, to be a role, a role model and, and, and a light in the world. But at the same time, I'm still human. So I'm, I still I have plenty of flaws. I'm going to fail. I'm not going to always make the right decisions. And I'm, and I'm okay with that, you know? So yeah, I'm going to have me some whiskey. I'm going to have me some Bel Air. I'm going to have me some, 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 you know, McQueen Violet Fog gin. I'm going to have me some bamboo rum. And that doesn't make me any less than the person that doesn't drink. You know, we all have our vices. That person that doesn't drink might smoke. I don't smoke. You know, the person that doesn't drink and smoke might have a gambling problem. I don't have a gambling problem. So we all are human. We all have our issues. Yeah. And, you know, our life is only one person that can judge us. That's right. And that's the man that's upstairs. Right. So, you know, right. and it took me quite a long time to get to that point. So I love that you brought that topic up, Dave. That's a, that's a real good one. Thank you for that. But, but, but it's nice to get there, isn't it? And just say, okay, now I yeah. know how to walk this walk. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I, I uh, probably personal circumstances playing, but just know, audience, that everybody in life gets a renaissance period, a redo. And when when you do, take it wholeheartedly. Yes, sir. Flush your toilet of the things that are jamming up your toilet and get stuff out of the way to let blessings come in. And Amen. You'll be amazed at what happens to you. I, I sit here as one of those. And Amen. It, it is it is a shock. Uh, the other thing is that is that is absolutely beautiful is to be instructed and inspired by such creativity and genius i i gotta tell you amadeus you're named properly uh, thank you brother yeah man thank and you. um uh it is great to put you in front of people and say see this is what that looks like family wow. man parents affected by teachers all the shit that is the american dream it, it's it's right here too don't buy all that dysfunction and right pathology shit that's out there yeah there's some out there just like in your community every community right. got some and yes, but, sir. But we got this too. Amen. Uh, absolutely. I love that. Um, I love that. I, 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 I'm excited about the music that you're bringing. Thank I know you, there's stuff brother. in the future that's going to be fire. And the only problem you have is you are not going to be able to get rid of us. We got a lot going on. Listen, you know, I love we're it. Gonna you. You in with us? I, oh, I'm all the way in. I'm all. Okay. I'm, signing on, I'm signing on the dotted line. Look, I'm signing on the dotted line right now. Got it. Got it. Got it. I'm, <laughs> I'm know, the Jesus document. Awesome, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm honored. Um, you know, I remember, and I got to give my big, my, my brother a shout out, my best friend, Ricky Strings. He's a guitarist. Um, yeah. we, we played in church together. We toured with Trey Songs for 14 years together. He's now currently um, her, her's guitar player nice. right now. And I remember years ago, we were sitting on a tour bus and he was like, dude, when you make it on here, you the man. And he was talking about Pensado's place. So, wow. I'm honored. Wow. I'm I'm happy. I'm excited to share with him this this special moment. Um, and I'm humbled, man. And just to you know to be celebrated by you, legends. And I'm like legend, man. Like legends, 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 legends. Thank you, guys, man. And this is this is an honor. Yeah, hey, you. please take us home before I start crying. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to be cute. Uh, <laughs> a couple of things about today is, and uh, I, I I love the belief and the faith. Um, that Amadeus has in himself so much so that it's become a lifestyle. Yes, sir. And, and that's what you want. You don't want to kind of pretend like you you have good things and things. It just it's just your lifestyle. And yes, then um, you 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 said uh, uh, I can't remember if it was today or a few days ago when we were talking about something else, but 
you said the point of all this is chasing your dreams and 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 using your gifts in a way that that they need to be used and and, and in a way that 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 that, that pleases him you know and yes sir pleases yourself and so i think those are two great thoughts to end on and i think that um i think that that's that's a pathway for living really and having amen. having uh happiness and, and success amen you know i just feel like with we with the dreams that we have when we lay at lay in bed at night and we have those dreams of being a teacher a musician a drummer Flying here, flying there, writing this deal, signing that deal, being a basketball player, being an athlete and signing, you know, that deal to the New York Giants or whatever you're dreaming of. Those are real. Those dreams are for you to wake up and say, wow, that's the vision God gave me. That's God showing me who I am already and who I have, who I'm capable of becoming if I play my part. That's right. And I think. That's the key where we all have dreams. We all have gifts. We all have talents. What you guys do, I can't do and vice versa. And that's the perfect thing. Whereas God made us all individuals. No one in the world has your fingerprints. No one. They can have your name. They can have their last name. They can look like you. We can have the beards. We can have the mustaches, the same skin tone. We can wear the same clothes, Jordans, whatever. But no one is Dave, no one is Herb, no one is Amadeus. That's the gift. And once you realize that that's the gift and you tap into who you are and you appreciate how God created and made you and you say, I'm going to go after every single dream I've dreamt and I'm going to hustle and I'm going to believe and I'm going to have the faith and I'm going to work. Yep. Rest is history. Absolutely. And, 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 and as a coda to that, um, it's not that hard to do it. It, it. It's it's just about being determined to do the right thing and not being affected by the wrong thing. And I tell you, Absolutely. your walk completely changes. Your outlook changes. Your bank account changes. Amen. Things change. So, so why not do it? If you're not inspired, you should be. Uh, right. You have met and heard and listened to an awfully wise man on a show that fortunately people think is wise too. And we'll see everybody next week. Yes, sir. Peace. Much love.